All right, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the simple steps that I use to solve a polynomial equation. And we're gonna work with a degree four polynomial equation. These polynomials can look really complicated and the solution can be really intimidating, but I'm gonna walk you through it so that everything is nice and simple for you. Now, the first thing we're gonna to do to solve this degree four polynomial equation is we're gonna factor it. And there's a few different ways you can do that. I'm gonna use the factor theorem here and I'm gonna pick on the factors of the constant term. And I'm gonna write out those factors. So I've just written out the factors of negative 12, starting with positive or negative one and just working my way up to positive 12. I'm hoping that you're able to find the factors of a constant term if you're solving a degree four polynomial equation. Just remember that the product of a few of these pairs will give me 12, right? Six times two, I have four times three, I have one times 12. And if I make any one of those negative, I'm gonna get negative 12. Now the goal here is to find a factor that when substituted in for X will give me zero. So what I like to do in problems like this is literally just start at one and work my way up to the biggest factor until I get zero. Now I'm not gonna show you that big messy process in this video because I wanna keep things short. Now when I end up substituting in negative one, I end up getting zero. Now the factor theorem says that if negative one makes this polynomial equal to zero, then X plus one must be a factor. Okay, so I'm gonna write x plus one. That's gonna be my first factor. And that's gonna help me solve this polynomial equation. All right, so let's talk about what we're gonna do with x plus one. Since x plus one was a factor, I can use this to perform some synthetic division to factor this polynomial equation. Now, if you're not familiar with synthetic division, it's a short process that allows us to divide a polynomial like this one by a binomial like this one. And the way we do that is we take that binomial, we set it equal to zero, and we're gonna get a number that makes that binomial equal to zero, so negative one. And I'm gonna take that negative one and I'm gonna place it on the outside of a little random L bracket thing. And I'm gonna place it right here. And in the top row of that L bracket are gonna be my coefficients of my polynomial. Okay, so my original polynomial. So I had a coefficient of one in front of X to the four. I have a coefficient of one in front of X cubed. I have a coefficient of negative 13 on X squared, negative 25 on X. And then I have that little lonely negative 12 at the end. Now the first step of my synthetic division process tells me to bring that one down and just place it at the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do is take that one, I'm gonna multiply by negative one and place the result right here underneath my second coefficient, okay? I'm then gonna add straight down. So I'm gonna take one plus negative one to get zero. And I'm gonna repeat this process over and over again until I get to the end of my synthetic division table. Now, if this is a process that you haven't seen before, check out the link video for a in-depth walkthrough. This is a really helpful tool that's gonna to save you lots and lots of time, especially if you don't like using polynomial long division. Now you're gonna see that when you get to the end of your synthetic division table, you're gonna get a remainder of zero. And that makes sense because remember we chose negative one because it gave us zero when we substituted it into our polynomial. Okay, so the remainder of zero is a good thing. That means we're on the right track. Now, when we perform synthetic division, the numbers that we get as a result will become the coefficients of a new polynomial that has that X plus one factor removed. Okay, so what we have is we have that X plus one factor. So I'm gonna write that. And then we have this new expression that has a coefficient of one in front of an X cubed term. Okay, we removed one X from our degree four polynomial. So our first term will now have a power of three and the coefficient is gonna be one from our synthetic division here, okay? Our next term is gonna have a coefficient of zero. I'm just gonna write it. And that's gonna be an X squared term because we're gonna decrease our power by one each time, okay? So continuing on, we're gonna have a negative 13 coefficient on an X term and we're gonna have that negative 12 and we're just close a set of brackets there. And I'm just gonna set that equal to zero because we are still solving an equation here. All right, so at this point, we've made some progress solving this degree four equation. We've reduced the power by one. We now have a factor of X plus one on the outside, but we're still working with a cubic and we still somehow need to find the values of X that are gonna make this whole thing equal to zero. Now, since we're working with a cubic here and I need to factor this, right, to get this to a point where I can solve for X, I'm gonna just apply the exact same process over again. I'm gonna start by looking for factors of that final constant term. And I'm gonna choose a factor that when substituted into my equation gives me zero. Since we're working with negative 12 again, I'm gonna pull up the factors of negative 12. And we already know that negative one is gonna make this whole thing equal to zero. So again, that tells us that X plus one is a factor. And we already know that X equals negative one is gonna be the value that makes that binomial equal to zero. Just gonna shrink that a little bit and make things easier here. Now what we wanna do is we wanna use that negative one on the outside of our synthetic division table, but this time we're gonna use the coefficients on our cubic that we created after our first synthetic division process, right? So we're gonna work with the coefficient of one, zero, negative 13, and negative 12, okay? And performing those same steps, I'm gonna bring that one down, I'm gonna multiply by negative one, place the result here, I'm gonna add straight down, I'm gonna multiply this negative one by that negative one to produce one, adding straight down, 
and I'm gonna continue that process right until the end, and you're gonna see, of course, that I get zero again. And we should get zero here. Remember, that's important because we chose x plus one as our factor. We knew that x equals negative one will make that cubic equal to zero, so we should get a remainder of zero. Just gonna shrink that again here to give me some more space. Now, remember we had that first x plus one factor that we pulled out in our first synthetic division process. I'm just gonna write that again. I'm gonna write another x plus one factor, which is the one that we just pulled out. So we have two of those. And in the next set of brackets, I'm gonna place the result of our synthetic division process. My coefficients of one, negative one, and negative 12 are gonna give me a quadratic expression, right? It's gonna be one degree less than our cubic. So a quadratic expression with a coefficient of one, our next term will be an X term with a coefficient of negative one, and our final term will be that negative 12. Okay, so you can see that I end up with a nice quadratic trinomial and I'm gonna set this whole thing equal to zero because we are still solving an equation. All right, so at this point, we're getting close to being able to solve our equation for X. We've got a product of two binomials and we have a quadratic trinomial. So this has really become something quite manageable for us. And I'm just gonna bring my work up here so that I have some more space. And I'm also gonna put a power of two on that X plus one binomial because I know that X plus one times X plus one is X plus one squared. I'm just gonna clean things up a little bit. Now our last step is gonna to be to factor that trinomial. And if you're not comfortable with that process, I'll link a video here to help you out. But to do this as quickly as possible, what we wanna do is find two numbers that add to get the coefficient on our x term, which is negative one, while also multiplying to get that negative 12 term. Okay, now we know that negative four and three will satisfy those conditions. So I'm gonna write those two numbers and I'm gonna place them after an x inside some brackets, and that will be the factored form of that trinomial. And after all that work, we are finally at a point where we can solve this degree four polynomial equation. Since we have a product of binomials here, we know that each one of these sets of brackets is going to contain a solution for us. So setting this first set of brackets equal to zero, we're gonna see that we have a solution at x equals negative one. And we actually have two of those binomials. So you could say that we have two solutions at x equals negative one. And that has some pretty interesting implications for the graph of this polynomial function that I'm not gonna get into in this video. So I'm just gonna say that there's a solution at x equals negative one in this video. Looking at the second set of brackets, we can see that x equals four will be a solution, and our final solution will be at x equals negative three. And with that, we've solved our degree four polynomial equation. Now, if you're studying polynomials, the chances are you're gonna need to know how to graph a polynomial function just like this one, which is why you're gonna wanna head over to this video right here, and I will see you there.